InDesign 26 is now here and it's packed full of features and updates that will save you hours on your new projects going forward that you wish you had earlier. Hey, I'm Darren Goddard and in this video I'm going to take you through all the new features and updates in 2026 of InDesign. Let's jump into it. Now with InDesign 26, you can actually open a PDF directly into InDesign and edit it. So let me show you how. So we go up to the file menu, open PDF, navigate to where your PDF is, select it, click open, and it will convert it. And there we have it, a PDF which has been converted to an editable InDesign file. Another update they've got is called the Flex Layout. So basically what you can do here is you can actually group objects together and then move them around within a flexible layout. Let me show you how. So this is our first layout, which we're gonna to submit to the client. So we'll duplicate that spread and go to it. So I'm just gonna zoom out a bit, move this over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these images into this area here. So we need to go up the window, flex layout move that over to there, and then we'll select all these here, these four images, and we'll create a flexible layout. Now we have it. So we've now grouped these into a flexible layout. We've got various settings here. We've got the width we can set to auto, or fixed so it won't move. This is the direction of the flow of the images. Here we've got space between images, space around, space evenly, flex start, which is where it will anchor from, center and flex end. And then these are grayed out, but they will come available when I select flex start. And then I'm just gonna grab the handle here and turn it over, grab this to move it. So this is the area you wanna add it into. So at the moment you can see nothing's shown because we've got the orientation to go horizontal into a row. We need to click column and then we'll see all the four images stacked in a column. But obviously we want these two to sit up here. So what we need to do is wrap the content. So we'll click that there and you can see it's wrapped the content, but it hasn't pushed this one up. So what we can do is grab the handle, push it up to where we want it. And now we can know about changing the distances and the settings. So we'll click on here, we'll go to flex start. So basically it will anchor it to this top left corner. Now we've got the space in between visible and we can actually change that. So we can add some space. So let's, let's change that to 10 and let's change that to 10. Once again, we need to open up the box. So now in our layout, it's gonna hit W on the keyboard, which will hide the guide. We've got 10 millimeters all the way around. So what we can do now is just grab this box, pull that down to there, grab this other text box, place it where we want it. I'm gonna anchor that there. I'm just gonna make that 80, move that up to there, put the preview button. And there we have it, another alternative layout, which we can show the client. Though we are pushing the um, generative fill in the latest version of InDesign. So I've got some text here and a shape. So what you can do now is you can actually fill the shape and the text with an image. First thing you need to do is go up to the window, text to image, if you haven't got it open already. And you've got to make sure that you haven't got text to image, you've got generative fill beta. But that won't come available until you click on the object. So I'm going to click on the shape, type in orange slice, and then we'll hit generate. It'll give me three options and I can choose which one I like best. Now we can look at the text. So pro tip, ensure that it's a single line of text and it's 48 points or larger for the best results. So what we'll do now is we'll type in orange peel Keep the orange theme going, hit generate. And once again, it will come up with three options. So again, it will take a little while to generate this in the background. And then we can pick which out of the three we want to use for our next project. If you like this tutorial in a PDF format, let me know in the comments below. Just deselect that, and then I'll hit W on the keyboard for a preview. And there you've got it. You've got the orange pill, it's copy and you've got the slice in that shape. Another pro tip, use a script font for this because if you use a sans serif, it's very blocky and you won't get the same effect. So those are the biggest updates and new features in InDesign 2026, which will help your workflow going forward. Let me know in the comments which is your favorite one. And if you've liked this tutorial and got value, please consider giving me a like, subscribing to the channel for future updates and videos. Thanks and keep creating. And just before you go, check out the next video here.